the measure of your environmental impact measured in terms of the amount of carbon dioxide that you've produced personally. In your and day, whether it's driving to work or the food you eat, uh, and most people never really thought of those things before, sort of before this uh, emergence of green in the past few years, especially the last year with the Al Gore movie. Um, it's more on people's mind, the idea of, of global warming and that we are warming the planet because of all this new carbon that we're creating. Obviously another aspect that I think most people know about is transportation and you know carpooling or getting an energy efficient car and taking the bus, stuff. taking the bus, buying mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what you're thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things I do is travel. I travel frequently and I'm always on a plane and I'm kind of worried because that's huge. You know, I, I get on a plane, I'm one individual and there's 200 other people and we're flying on this massive thing that's producing a lot of bad stuff for the environment. So how do I address that? No more trips. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's becoming a little bit more conscious, a little bit more aware of that footprint, that thing we call the footprint. If you have to fly to take a business trip, um, you could potentially look at sort of a teleconferencing situation. But if you have to do it, you have to do it. If we really want to, you can actually offset your plane travel now through most of the travel sites. There's actually a button. If you want to do what's called carbon offsets, where you can basically neutralize the carbon use from the, 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 air, the air flight. In other words, you can neutralize it, you can offset it. What does that mean? Carbon what? offsets. Basically, a carbon offset, I mean, there are companies out there like Carbon Fund, and if you pay them a certain amount of money, they've calculated, they've figured out exactly how much money you can pay to them so that they will do something positive for the environment, like planting trees, like investing in wind power or solar. The idea is um, that you plant trees and, and, and trees sequester carbon. They take it out of the environment. So are you saying when I buy a ticket, if I'm on Expedia, for example, when I'm clicking my seat preference and I want a vegetarian meal and I can click a button that will, and someone will plant a tree on my behalf. Quite a few, of, yes. Yes. Quite a few of them now do that. Did you know? I, think, I, yeah. I did, but yeah. my, my skepticism with that is that I'm giving some random company that I've never heard of, yeah. you know, 25 bucks. And how many trees are they yeah, going like, to Or is it going to trees? Is it going to, like, fi you know, cleaning up a river? A like, how, how do I know which... You know what they should do? You know those the organizations where you can sponsor a child and they send you a picture every year and you can see that your uh -huh. money is going... They should yeah. send you a picture every year. Wyatt, you bring up a good point. It's the Wild West out there with the carbon offsets as well. There are just as many companies, I think, that are pulling the wool over people's eyes a little bit with marketing, as many of those as there are that are really doing this diligently and doing it well. Yeah, we actually did our carbon footprint here as an agency. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we are carbon neutral now. Really? We had a consultant yeah. come in and he asked us a lot of very hard questions in a lot of detail That's about good. what we do, all of our habits. Did and, you have to um, make a lot of changes then? Um, what, what, oh. Well, it's interesting that rather than just going and buying those carbon offsets to neutralize our energy use, what they recommend and what we're trying to do is reduce our use of energy. So that means sleeping your computers at night, actually even turning them off. Um, all these little things, recycling, composting, if you can do that in your office environment, it's harder for some people, but there are a lot of things that we can do. Recycling is the big one. Two-sided copies. Um, compact fluorescent light bulbs right. is another. So the little thing. things, no matter where we are in life, they, they, know. Know. they, they all add up. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, so a lot of people drink water out of water bottles, and you flip them over, right? And you look at the little recycling symbol, and you think it's okay. But can you tell us about water bottles and whether that's good or not to use them? There's two issues with water, water bottles particularly. There's the water issues and what you're drinking, and then there's the issue with the bottles. One issue with water, drinking water out of water bottles, is the bottles end up in the landfills, and they, ne they almost never go away. They'll be here way past as long as we're here. But then there's the issue with... Uh, what they call off-gassing well, from the plastics. Leaching, 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 leaching from leaching. the plastics. I mean, that's another so issue. I mean, you mean that the plastic is actually... Yeah, there, you probably... There ...molding with our water and we're drinking yes. plastic. Yeah, yes. some studies are showing there are things called like bisphenol A. You know, these chemicals that are leaching out of these bottles. And so now a lot of the companies are moving towards either a metal solution or a plastic that's not necessarily going to be leaching those things. Like SIG and yeah. uh, Clean Canteen. And now Gene has become aware they're changing these things. A lot of people are using glass bottles now for their babies. 
A lot of people are drinking out of stainless steel bottles. They're, they're not as appealing because they're, they're opaque and you can't see that water, that transparent thing. That's why water bottles are plastic and clear. And the water itself, there's a recent study show that shows that I think at 20 major metropolitan areas, the tap water is cleaner than bottled water. And so that's, that's a really interesting trend, to move towards tap water over bottled water. There's, you know, in some ways, we're taking the bottled water out of the picture, uh, which is really attractive because it's moving away from that throwaway culture, consumer culture that we have. What else? What in the home? So we, got, we have cleaning products, we have furniture. Well, lawn care, that's a big mm -hmm. one. Oh. I mean, there is an enormous impact to the, the pesticides and herbicides and fungicides that people use on their lawns. I mean, there's a lot of concern now about what that does to kids and pets who are playing on the lawn. Now, can you get organic stuff that's actually going to do the same you job? You can, as actually, the... yeah. Most of the major lines, like Scott's, for example, I mean, they've come out with green alternatives now. Okay. So you can go to Home Depot, you can go to your lawn care store and find alternatives, things that are going to be safe because there's enormous amounts of runoff that come from your lawn. Do you, you know? guys advocate just basic things, too? Like, we live in the Pacific Northwest, and we have lots of slugs, and if slugs are damaging your garden. I mean, uh, when I was a kid, we would put salt, salt out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people put beer out. I mean, I know, that's wasteful. Wasteful no. uh, beer. Well, yeah, and then you're putting the can of beer, and you have to recycle that. I mean, there's a lot of line get drawn. There's well, yeah. wisdom to these home remedies. You know, cinnamon for ants, for example. If you have an ant problem, sprinkle cinnamon on your window. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, peppermint oil. You know, I mean, there are yeah. lots of ways. Yeah, cornmeal for um, for weeds, dandelions. Really? It's a gluten, a corn gluten. So it's all natural. And yeah, I mean, we work with one client that's um, uh, is trying to clean up Puget Sound, and we've seen that the runoff is sort of the main cause for pollution in the Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. It's destroying a lot of the species. It's coming out of our lawns, okay. the runoffs from the rains, and so that's one of the things that could, could be really helpful for the area. Or washing your car at home. Mm -hmm. Like I've always heard, don't, you know, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. that car wash because they have a... Yeah. yeah. So there are eco car washes. There's a place, Brown there Bear are. Car Wash. Brown yeah. Bear. Know, the Bear. amazing thing is that yeah. there are eco options for everything, you know? In, in, in each category, you're going, you're going to find a, sort of accessible solutions and some that are less accessible by virtue of they're either not as good looking or they cost too much. But there are a lot more products now that are sort of within range, parity and pricing. Mm -hmm. They look as good or maybe even better. Maybe they look cooler or maybe they're hipper. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, more, they're more accessible now. And you guys said we're on a journey, whether you're already on this green journey or you're about to begin, just keep moving forward. Keep moving yeah, forward. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Live longer. Yeah. Live happier.